Eva, my second question for you is, we know that uh, job seekers need to tailor their resume when applying for a job. And we know that they have to use some keywords from the job description so that the applicant tracking system rank them on the top of the list. So besides that, what tips you have to job seekers to tailor their resumes? And we know that sometimes recruiters have between six or 10 seconds to check a resume to identify if this person is going to move forward or not. So what can job seekers do to get the attention of the recruiter? Absolutely, very good question. And this is a very challenging thing. You're absolutely right. Recruiters scan through resumes very quickly and therefore it's, it's an absolute must to tailor it. If you already, I would even say, if you already depend on just your resume, you're already at a disadvantage. Uh, I think networking and um, coming in through referrals, for example, is, is, is a much more powerful tool. And I think we, we might be talking about that later. But if you therefore depend on your resume and you know it's going to be a screen in, screen out situation, you don't have the chance necessarily to tell your story beyond that resume, you have to make sure that the keywords are there. And what I would suggest um, for resumes in general is to keep them very concise to the point and relevant indeed to the job that you're applying to and the company that you're applying to. And where you can mostly really tailor that is in that top piece where you put a summary, right? Your a summary of your profile, uh, because you can then really 100% tailor that, rewrite that each time when you would apply. Uh, because that is the first thing that people see, right? You have your contact details and then that summary and then it starts with the most recent job experience. So I would say that the, the work experience is what it is, right? There's only so much that you can actually change for each job because it is what it is. For that work experience, I would say as general tips, you would keep it again short and to the point and relevant. So, and also quantify, quantifiable uh, achievements over just bullets of responsibilities, right? Some people write like job descriptions yeah. um, in, in their work experience, but it's much better to actually describe what you have done with numbers, with budgets, with timeframes, so that people can see your impact in those roles versus what the job should be. So that uh, is a tip in terms of how you, how you write your work experience, but you, you can't really change that each time because it is what it is. So that, that the, the opportunity to, to tailor is really in that top piece that is the summary. So in terms of quantifying it, if people do not have any impact, so shall they think how their job, even if there's a receptionist or customer service or other roles that doesn't have that much budget or number related. So do you think that they should start thinking that way and put it as a bulletin point at the end or like achievement in this role, comma, and then write it? What do you think? Yeah, I, I would say don't force it. Um, uh, if, if you indeed, if you don't manage a budget and if you don't manage a team, um, there's also no, no need to, to, of course, you, you can't talk about those things. But I would say that the, the key is really to talk about how you did in the job versus how the job should have been performed, right? And I see that in a lot of resumes where people literally take bullet points from a job description, the same as that is in the posting that, that, that would be on there when, when they leave the job and, and the recruiter would be looking for a new person. That is, not, that is not impactful. That's not telling me anything. That's, that's just telling me that is what the job was supposed to be, but not what you did. So even you know, a receptionist who doesn't manage a budget necessarily or a team, they probably have personal accomplishments, right? Things that they did on top of their standard duties. So if you have anything where you participated in a project, where you took some initiative, um, where you led maybe people informally um, versus managing a team directly, then I would say put that in there because that is telling me something about you and how you performed in the job. If you have been over time if you have been recognized with an award or a prize, or if people, if you had consistent high performance ratings, or you've been promoted, or anything that makes uh, you stand out from, from the crowd or any other person who would perform that job, I would put it in there. And what about uh, the new immigrants here in Vancouver or in Canada? We have a lot of new immigrants coming from all over the world, I'm sure same in the US, but uh, most of them, they are facing that Either you don't have a local experience or we don't recognize your experience or your degrees. What tips do you have for those people that are coming here to the new country and struggling? 
That's a very tough one, absolutely. And I, again, I would say um, making sure you connect with the right people, you network and you connect and you find like-minded people um, who, who you then either you can help them and they can help you, right? It's, it's all about um, looking to connect before you even have the need because depending on that resume, as I mentioned before, it's a tough game. And even especially if you're in a situation that you described just now where you are not one-to-one, -one, your experience is not one-to-one -one applicable, um, it's going to be even tougher. So you mentioned it before in terms of how resumes are being screened, the, the time that recruiters even look at it, the keywords that are important. So um, if, 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 you, if you have already a disadvantage at that level, I would, I would really recommend to make sure you have an opportunity to tell your story so that people look beyond that resume and look beyond the fact that you don't have experience in the local mar market. There's another opportunity these days, right? And that is online, the type of thing that you're doing, creating content. And if you're, if you're afraid to create content, because for a lot of people that will be a barrier, right? That's not so easy to start doing that out of no nothing. But um, there's a lot of opportunity as well to do it a little bit more passive uh, by not creating content, but at least engaging with other people's content, right? Writing comments, writing questions, engaging with it, uh, taking part in the discussion so that people start noticing you. I think that is a big thing because we have this opportunity now through a platform like LinkedIn to tell our story, brand ourselves, make ourselves visible beyond that resume. Yeah. I totally agree with you and thank you for all those tips that you gave to so many different level of people in terms of tailoring their resume. And for the audience, if you have any other tips that are working for you in terms of tailoring resumes, please leave it in the comment section. We would like to hear from you and tune in tomorrow for another question with Eva.